show and gotta explain myself. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of DGXM Podcast with Dea and Rock. We are so excited to bring on a cool personality. He's known as the meme lord and real lord of the Albanian community. And his humor has really made a global entrance on Albanian media, on American media. And we know him by the name Blerim. Not Blero, right? Just Blerim. No, no. Yeah, Blerim. That's my first <laughs> Blerim. Blero? People say Blero too? Blero is like a shortened version of the name Blerim. Like the singer oh, okay. Blero in Albania, if you know of him. Okay. No, I don't know. You should, yeah. you, should just go, you should just go with it, bro. All the ladies love him. I'll go with Blero, whatever. <laughs> so Blerim like, is like a cute nickname. for his yeah. humor, for his skits um that really have made an emblem in most albanian conversations of like hey you guys you know this guy Blerim, he's always making skits about being an albanian about being an albanian guy albanian dating albanian businesses and in that form he's brought the community and business together and get to know each other through his humor and his work on social media so without further ado Blerim, welcome to the show thank you thank welcome, you Darren. thank you for having me I appreciate yeah, of it. Of course. The meme yeah, lord, the Albanian meme lord, I guess. I didn't even know that was like, she, she was like, she's like, known as the Albanian meme lord. I guess so. Well, if you're not the meme lord, what are you then? I don't know. I'm a content creator, I guess. Or, or I, personal, I guess whatever. I'll be a meme lord. I'll accept it. I'll be, <laughs> yeah. I'll be the Albanian meme lord. There you go. Um, he's definitely he, he's definitely an awesome content creator, and that's why we have him out here. And um, I've been a big supporter of Blerim since I first witnessed him. I mean, yeah. it's probably about it's probably you know, about a year, year and a half now since I've been seeing his videos. You know, nobody supported ever like you did. To be honest, dude, you're always really? reposting my stuff. You're always liking, comment. <laughs> I swear to God, nobody in the Albanian community ever showed more love than you, bro. So I appreciate that. That's just that's just my I nature, do, bro. Yeah. That's just my nature, and I appreciate like, you know, like I understand it. I think because we both come from here, you know. Yeah. So like I I understand where you're coming from with the jokes, and I know there's no like ill intent. So I always like that. I I like seeing the funny stuff. I like seeing it all, and yeah. I just think it's I think it's natural too. Not many people can do stuff no. naturally like that. So yeah, Thank you know it's it, it's awesome to see, and it's cool to see all the other content creators kind of they come up with their own things. But you've kind of been like in your own lane, and like Dea yeah. says, everybody well, everybody does mention Blerim Blerim Blerim, and I'm like, yeah, he's good, man. He's very good. And then you're trying to be the pioneer over here. Oh, you are. Yeah, you are already the pioneer. <laughs> and the idea is this. It takes a lot of courage to bring something new to the scene in the beginning. And then everyone wants to ride the same boat. You did that. But that's okay. That yeah. first step. That's okay. That's amazing because you're inspiring a different culture is the idea. But mm -hmm. I'm interested to know, how was it like when you were establishing those roots, when you had the idea in your mind and you said to yourself, I'm going to start recording and posting online? Well, actually, funny. So my initial foundation was a lot of people probably don't know, but maybe people do know if you scroll all the way down in my TikTok. Um, I was actually I was first popular for being like a, a doorman. So I blew up for being like door daddy. That's what like people would call me. Because <laughs> So there was this one girl I used to work in a building called Sky and there was this one girl that lived there. And she whatever she made like TikToks, but she only had like 300 followers or something like that. And she recorded me like doing like a dance at the front desk. I was doing like a goofy dance and then like it blew up and everyone, everyone was like, oh, my God, who's the doorman? Da, da, da. And then uh, eventually I got fired for that from that job for making TikToks. Really? And then I was like, okay. <laughs> but that that initially gave me my first like 100k followers though. There you like go. That, that's what that's what gave me like the, like a big boost. Did you and broadcast then, that when you were like, yo, I just got fired for doing TikToks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. That's and funny. then you know I lost I lost a big part of the community that, that I had built already. Um, because they didn't they were like they probably didn't want to see me anymore because I wasn't making doorman TikToks. And then I I sound like an Albanian guy. Eh, there. You know, you know they say that. That's that's fine, bro. That's fine. Even if eh, you want to throw some Albanian in there, you can. Don't worry. No, good. My my, my Albanian's horrible. So <laughs> and then I was like, yo, I gotta find like a new niche. So I was like, okay. I saw a lot of people doing content on their ethnicities. And I was like, you know, I know my ethnicity pretty well. I'm Albanian. Let me just try and make some funny skits, you know? And uh a lot of times, like when I would talk to like a new girl. This is like what first gave me my idea. A lot of times when I would talk to like a new girl they would, and I would tell them that I'm Albanian, they'll be like, oh my God, you're Albanian. You guys are so toxic. And uh, that kind of gave me the initial idea of like, let me just start making content on this since it's so relatable. And I feel like a lot of like uh, Albanian Americans mainly relate to it. Like, like you rock, like you're Albanian American. That's mainly what like my content is geared towards. 
Yeah. I'm and, Albanian uh, American too. Oh well, you, you too. <laughs> He's like, no, you're Chinese Albanian. <laughs> You're, you're DC Albanian. That doesn't count. DC well, Albanian doesn't just... count. We'll get into that next time. No, no. That's fine. But that's really cool, Lenim. Um, when it comes yeah. to your skits, what have been some of your favorites that you put out there? I'm sorry? One more time? What have been some of your favorite skits that you put out there? Some really? of my favorite skits? Yeah. So personally, I don't watch my reels over again because it's kind of cringe watching <laughs> myself. Like, I, dude, I hate seeing myself. Like, after I'm done editing it, I post it. I don't look at it again. I think what I really like enjoy doing the most is um the dad ones that I do because <laughs> yeah those are good you know, my, my the Albanian dads are just funny dude like That's they're true. just a meme. Yeah, they're they're, wa- no, no, they're walking memes so every like Albanian dad uh video that I do was solely modeled completely after my dad like acted that way and everything That's funny like what so, is, what does like, your family ones. feel what does your family feel about the videos? Like when they see it, do they do they laugh with you? Do they say, "Oh, they're in"? Yeah. Like, I mean, not get more <laughs> like, At first, at, you know, at first when I was like, I wasn't getting many views of it. They're like, "Oh, what are you doing with your life?" This and that, you know, like typical like Albanian parents or family, like yeah. be a doctor or something, you know. And then I, was, I just kept doing content. And my mom, actually, funny funny fact, I blocked my mom on TikTok. Um, because uh, she that's, she that's, used to get. Bro, she used to get mad at me because I was cursing in my TikToks. And then, like, mm-hmm. every single video I would post, she would come and critique it to me. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to block her. And now she thinks, like, uh, she doesn't know that she's blocked. She thinks there's something wrong with her TikTok. She's not good with technology. So this is that's definitely getting clipped. <laughs> so we'll, keep, uh, we'll keep this podcast away yeah. from her. <laughs> I love that. I love that. She's probably going to see it somewhere. Who knows? That's going viral. Well, <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. block. Well, their name. So we want to know a bit about your Albanian background. Where are you okay. from? So my family uh, is from Croia, Montenegro. Okay. okay. Yeah. And they immigrated here from, oh, so half, my mom's side of the family went to Paris and my dad's side of the family mainly came to New York City. But oh. my ethnicity comes from Croia, Montenegro, Albanian from Croia. From Croia. Okay. And yeah. when did your family move to America before you were born, I'm assuming? When? Yeah. So my dad actually made the initial step. I believe it was 1980 or 1981. He came here at like 17, 18 years old, just looking for a better life, you know, because mm-hmm. they were very poor over there, as mm-hmm. a lot of Albanian families or Montenegro families Especially were. Especially in the 80s. Um, oh, yeah. Yugoslavia, oh, yeah. for example, being an Albanian minority. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my dad would tell me stories about... I'm sorry? No, go ahead. My dad would tell me stories about, you know, like, you know, the typical like Albanian story that I had to walk a mile to school with no shoes. And yeah. like, you know, like we, we make fun of it here, but until I really went there and saw it last year, it was a very like humbling experience mm-hmm. seeing where he grew up and like the farm he grew up on in the middle of like, in the middle of the mountains where there's nothing, you know, they didn't have, my dad told me he didn't have a toilet until he was like 15. Wow. Like it had a, an outhouse, but like not a toilet or running water either until he was like 20. So it's a very, very humbling experience. Very, very similar stuff in Kosovo. I don't know how yeah. Albania is during this time, too. I mean, it probably was the same thing. But Kosovo is the same thing, too. I remember going for my first time in 2014 or whatever it was, 2013, 2014. And at my aunt's house, they still had a outside bathroom. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like you, you got to go to an outhouse. You gotta go to it outhouse. might be a bit of like a rural okay. area thing, but I don't think it's common everywhere. But well, What part yeah. of Albania are you from? There? What part? Well, I guess you haven't watched our podcast because I've talked about it a couple of times. I haven't. Um, what part do you but think I would like to know. Sure. So, for example, Mont Flas me to ship. Then those oh, are you're from. You're from Shipman. You're from Shipman. <laughs> yes. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm from Tirana. Mm-hmm. Tirana. Right. I know because I don't understand what the hell you're saying. Really? Is that difficult? <laughs> I mean, yeah. kind of. Our dialects are pretty different. I you can understand so? you very well. I can understand Northern dialect very, very well. Well, because you speak the proper way. So, yeah, and you yeah. probably, did you, what, did you grow up speaking it? Yeah. So I also learned Albanian simultaneously when I was going to school here, written Albanian as okay. well. So I think that really helped me. And I, I like language, right, yeah. I'm a polyglot. So Not I learn, but yeah. Really a polyglot. What other languages do you know? Fluently or the ones that I dabble in? both like Fluently, break them down it's uh, arabi espanol italiano ship and english so that's just fine no. I'm trying to you learn didn't even, you didn't even yeah. settle for the arabic italian you said arabi italiano you said the problem <laughs> <laughs> uh, like so. 
I wanted, I'm very curious again about your family's background because your father came here quite young um, mm. before he was even 20, but he kept that Albanian identity very strong. Of course. And he transmitted yeah. that to you and I'm guessing siblings, if you have siblings. Yeah, I have, I have one brother, yeah. So how did you guys keep that culture strong within your household and the community? That's a good question. Actually, I don't really know. I mean, growing up, obviously, since my dad was from Albania or Montenegro, um, same thing, honestly, he was Albanian from Montenegro, so he had the Albanian culture. Albanian. Mm -hmm. Growing up, he would always play like Albanian music in the house because that's what he liked. That's what he grew up on. Or we would eat like Albanian food or things like that. And that's how kind of how it kept, kept the culture in. Um, and when I was young, he always wanted to go to on vacation when he didn't have his papers so we couldn't really leave the country so we would go to like places in the states when he finally got his papers he wanted to go to like albania or montenegro and i growing up here i was like why are we gonna go to montenegro what, why are we gonna go to albania i don't want to go there you know i want to go to like cancun or florida mm -hmm. i didn't know any better yeah, yeah and then eventually eventually after my dad passed i ended up going to albania on my own uh in montenegro just to see like where he grew up and i i completely fell in love with it like Coming from the U.S., we don't have anything similar to that here. Yeah. Like, uh, beautiful, I mean, beautiful. I mean, Florida, Miami has some nice beaches, but it doesn't really compare to... The different kind of beauty. Montenegro. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a different kind yeah. of beauty. Yeah. Um, and it's it's my culture, you know? That's why I just, I love it so much. So, like, like I said, yeah, when he, I went last year, I just completely fell in love with it. And he's like, I go back ago. to Montenegro. He goes like, I go back to Montenegro, and it's... The most beautiful beach in the world he goes ah this is my place now i love this do it it was literally <laughs> the most beautiful beach i've ever seen i've yeah. been to bermuda bahamas all of that and i've never seen beaches like montenegro or like albania south of albania have you beautiful. been to southern yeah. albania too yeah i've been to both okay well i guess what, what did you father... oh, what did God. you like better oh i like the south of albania obviously yeah it's the, the beaches are way nicer you know you can go on instagram and, and tiktok and there's tons of videos i mean i have i've seen it but like you can Tons of video. It doesn't compare to the north. It's I, so I haven't been beautiful. to either or. I haven't oh, been really? to Montenegro. You told me you're going. Aren't you going? Yeah. Next yeah. next month, I hope. Your father really lives through you, um, in the culture that he instated in you and your family. Yeah. And look at you, you're making Albanian culture videos and are so well known for it. But another aspect of what you're doing consequentially is that you're informing other cultures about Albanian culture and kind of putting us on the map. Yeah. More. so you're a real, real cultural warrior in addition to being a meme lord <laughs> there you go and i'm a skender. patriot bro i'm gonna do it for skender bell <laughs> i do it for skender any albanian <laughs> man who is his favorite albanian historical figure and they say skender bell come on <laughs> Come what on, else would it be? What, what do you think I'm going to say? Enver Hoja? No. Absolutely <laughs> not. But why? Really what is it about Skanderbeg Skander that you love? Skander Bale. Mm -hmm. Dude, he's, he's just an iconic figure in the Albanian community. He's an icon. I mean, every, like, yeah, he's an icon. He's the reason I'm still Albanian today. He's the reason why I'm still Albanian, man. Exactly, like Rock said. Yeah, okay, I gotta exactly. love it. So how can we bring but back Skander Bale's, like strength and resilience to today's Albanians. We're gonna run around on horses with shields <laughs> and swords <laughs> in the same helmet that he wore. And that's it. So bring it back. We gotta wear the uh, uniform, everybody. Who do who do you find um who do you find like how can I say um like comedians or anybody that influences your work? Does anybody influence your work or is it really you have any like favorite people that you watch? on a daily basis, like through social media or through comedy or through anything like this that influences you? Um, who influences me? There is actually a various number amount of uh, TikTokers that do influence me. Um, like, you know, George Mokos is one of them. He does like the POV Greek things. Okay. And sometimes I'll, and I actually really like his videos and I've been watching him for actually a long time. Um, he doesn't know who I am, but I know who he is. He's got like fucking 3 million followers. Uh, but yeah, he's he inspires me a little bit. Uh, there's another guy from... Staten Island actually is a friend of mine. His name is Moose. I don't know if you've seen his like Arabic uh, TikToks, POV Arab guy. I think I have. I think yeah. I have. Yeah. But... yeah. So he, he, yeah, he's big on like that POV, like whatever ethnicity thing. So, okay. okay. Yeah. I enjoy their content as well. And do you have, uh, do you have any like people you want to collab with in the near future in terms of uh, like social media content or just any type of content in general? 
Yeah, I do. I mean, I do. I want to collab with more of like, I want to slowly start getting into streaming because I feel like streaming is like the new thing nowadays. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, a long shot would be like Kai Sanat, right? Like, I want to stream. I want to. I want to stream with the big guys. I feel like I'm ready for that. But I mean, as of right now, I am streaming with. Uh, sorry, collabing with. Uh, you ever seen the Polish guy on TikTok? Uh huh. POV Polish. Adrian, shout out to my boy Adrian. Was he? Was um, he in your and, uh, with the Italian video as well? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. Do, I'm doing a lot more with them as well. So okay. Yeah, I'm gonna be collabing with them a lot more. Um, but as of right now, I can't think of off the top of my head as somebody who I really like. I'm dying to collab with. No, that's totally fine. Just kind totally of kind fine. of focused on like I'm on my own what, right now. What do you feel though? Like when you do content with say with other people from other countries, do you feel like um it's building, I guess, a, a friendship or like do you think it's good for us? Do you think it's bad? I don't know. I just want to hear like, yeah, I think it's good. I yeah. definitely think it's good. I like I like I like getting Albania's name out there. You know, I, I like and whether it's I'm collabing with the Polish community, Arab community, there's people in those communities that have no I like Albania is still a con small country. So there's people yeah. in those communities that still have no idea about what Albania is about or or about anything about our culture. So even just collabing with these creators just gets the name out there. Like in their minds, they're like, okay, Albania, let me look it up. Let me see what they're about. So I, I want to, I'm trying to collab as much as I possibly can. Yeah, because I, I, oh, sorry. I had my Italian friends who were like sending me the video with you guys collabing and I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah those cool. went pretty big actually. Yeah. Those went pretty big. Yeah, I'm they, happy those did well. And I did it at I'm the right time too. I did it. I did it because like Albania and Italy was like a big like news thing. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know why it was such a big rivalry, but I just wanted to like jump on that, and it worked out well. It's because of the spaghetti break. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, the spaghetti break. Let's get... It went, oh, that's, it went know, viral. Get, get... Yeah, yeah. Do you spaghetti think break being went viral. Albanian helps you relate to these other cultures a bit more as well? Because as Albanians, we're a bit Eastern, we're a bit Western, we're European, but we also have a lot of Turkish influence um, from yeah. residual Ottoman times as well. So does it help you be more culturally adaptable? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, we, I don't know. I think we have so, so like, I, I think our culture is like so unique. Mm -hmm. You know, we do have like a lot of like Turkish culture. We do have a, a little bit of like, I guess maybe Slavic culture. I don't know. Um, but I think like, Balkan Albanian, culture, I think we're like general. Balkan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to say Slavic because it's okay. I'd be like, yo, this, guy's Canada, take, so, this, guy's, <laughs> like, yo, this guy's a Serb. Nah, people, bro, they, people, don't worry. We're going to roast me. Don't worry, don't no, worry. We got you. We will defend you. We'll defend the truth. Yeah. Um, I, co I come from Kosovo, and the Kosovo Albanian is definitely influenced by Slavic and Turkish big time. So, yeah. you know, there's not much you can really say. It's where we come from. Yeah. Um, when it comes to your creative process, right? Because a lot of people are interested in being creators or putting their content out there. There's different stages to creation. It's the idea, the activation, the creation, and then maintaining it. Can you tell us a bit mm -hmm. about what motivates you to keep going and how that process is like for you? Oh, what, what motivates me to keep going is like my long-term goal, right? Like I want to be like a big time content creator. Um, what I really want to do is be in a movie. Like I would love to be like a movie star. Um, I can see, I can see myself as like a James Bond or something. I don't know, like something, I want to be in an action movie. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's funny, as funny as, as funny as people think that I am, I low-key want to be like an action movie guy. But uh, I mean, my creative process, it. I kind of just, yeah, right? Just be like a yeah, big, like, you know, <laughs> like the Arnold Schwarzenegger type of guy, you know? Like, I get a little Hollywood, we need a, little bigger, a big but... Albanian actor right now, so you could fill yeah, yeah. that gap. Hopefully, let's see, maybe. Let's see, let's see if it happens. I don't want to say hopefully, it's going to happen. I'm there you go. It. Oh, it will, it will happen. That's, that's it will the mentality happen. I've had this whole time. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it. That's it. But oh, my yeah. creative process is I kind of just do it on the fly. Like, sometimes uh, I don't really write anything down or, like, script anything. It's just as I'm recording, ideas will just come to me, and I'll just bounce one idea off the other and it just goes it goes from there okay yeah. what 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 would you say to like um any people that do want to start creating content like how would you tell somebody to just you know start doing videos like you well it's simple just do it like you just literally just have to do it mm -hmm. yeah. you just have to, like you just have to have the confidence like a lot of people are like oh i look ugly in this picture or i look ugly in this video i can't post this you know how many times i think that i'm like ugly in some of my videos or those are like those are my most viral videos because when people people want to people want <laughs> to feel like they're relating to you like yeah. you're relatable you know you don't have to put out your best angle every time you just have to just do it and be yourself yeah and i think you being yourself will videos. take a lot of people a lot of people have like unique personalities and if they just post it they'll you know you don't know where you don't know where it can go what makes yeah, it's you organic confident, but what yeah. makes you confident 
What makes me confident? Yeah. Not caring. Not caring. Were like you literally just not just not caring. Yeah. I think I was I think I was like a, a childhood like class clown. And okay. then I think that car- that carried into like adulthood. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. I guess. So in addition, I'm, still, I'm still a big child. That's great. That's what keeps you creative, intelligent, and young yeah. over time as well. So I think creators mm-hmm. have that um cool thing about them. But in terms of your future goals, are you also a doorman right now or are you focusing solely on content creation like what what do you do so actually i manage a hotel um so that takes up a lot of my time because i work five days a week so i try to i try to the content creation i try to fill it fill it in in the gaps that i have from work as much as i can i'm just constantly constantly like on the go and working towards my goals okay like that they it's hard it's hard to find a gap in my day to do anything else that i like find time i hear you Mm-hmm. I feel you. I feel you on that. Do they allow you to do TikToks at this job? <laughs> I mean, they're pretty chill about it. They're pretty chill yeah. about it, but that's not like that's not my niche anymore. They they don't care, but that's not really what I, that's not. I found a new niche. So it's so funny when people sometimes people are like checking in and they'll see me like on like the lobby area and like that guy, like, you know. <laughs> rare. It's rare, rarely Albanian people, but like it, it feels pretty cool. Another what? thing that came to mind is, is people think like these content creators just don't have like daytime jobs. So like sometimes if people will see me there, they're like, "Yo, what are you doing here?" And I'm like, "I'm I'm working," you know. Uh, I still, every like, time we, we we all have daytime jobs. Yeah, every time yeah. I'm in public. Oh, I thought you only did social media and memes. I'm yeah. like, no, I got a day job. Uh, I work six days a week. <laughs> social media does not pay as much as people think it does. Definitely that, like, not. Nowhere really near. Not. Nowhere near anything they think. No, I mean it's nice publicity and it gets you like nice like brand deals occasionally. But like from like the actual apps themselves, like TikTok does not pay like cents, pennies. Especially Instagram. It's even worse. Yeah. Yeah. So would you say social media is a good starting point for those that are interested in entrepreneurialism, but they have to take it to the next step and kind of use the apps for their advantage instead of being taken advantage of by the apps? Well, I mean, if you're looking to start like a business, I think you can get some publicity really quickly on social media if you can do it correctly and kind of funnel that money into your business or like a product that you're selling however if you're looking on making content and looking on making money from the apps themselves that's not gonna happen unless it's like youtube i've heard youtube has a really good like program um but i'm not on youtube will you be that that should be soon yeah yeah i gotta i gotta find some time for youtube because that's more like long-form content well once you start streaming I'm i'm definitely gonna yeah yeah, once you start streaming, you can post your stuff right on there and you can make your money yeah. that way. Yeah. That's why it's good that you're building your fan base now because you can always have them resort to now follow my YouTube, follow my YouTube, follow my stream. So yeah, yeah. it helps you out. Helps you out in the long run for sure. No, definitely. If you have like if you have like a good niche that you're going with, you, your TikTok or Instagram page can blow up really quick and you can just funnel that into like a YouTube or yeah, whatever. Exactly. Uh, what keeps you excited like what keeps you happy and motivated to be able to do these things i feel like i've met a lot of people that are in the scene of humor especially within the content creation world and when you meet them they're not the same personality you are very much so that personality but you can't always be like ha 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 all the time (laughs) and you need to re-energize so how do you balance that it's hard. It's hard to be haha all the time. Um, I mean, what keeps me motiv- motivated is I like I like making other people happy. That's just I like making people laugh. That's the thing. That's how I've always, how I've always been. Bit how I've always been, and um, I bet I'm stumbling over my words a little bit. But I think okay. I think that's I mean, and I'm gonna take a bite of my burrito too because I'm I'm hungry, and uh-huh. I, I didn't I, I, like I didn't this. eat anything. <laughs> I didn't eat anything after the gym. So yeah, I had a place right here, and I was like staring at it the whole time. I'm like, oh, I want to take a that's bite. That's funny. Like, We're gonna do it. Enjoy. That's funny because the- oh, yeah. Like, that could go into our next segment. I was next just segment about to with... see that. <laughs> We're about to ask you a couple of questions and put you on the spot now. As bro, you... if you're going to ask yeah. me what my favorite Albanian food is, it's Burek Mimish, bro. I oh, was just God. <laughs> that shit dances in my mouth. Oh, my, my taste buds. So what does it dance? Vale or regaton? <laughs> it dances vale in my mouth. Every time I eat it, I hear... Oh man, well now we answer that question. So we, we can't <laughs> ask it again. But I'll ask you guys. Do you listen to a lot of Albanian music? Yeah, more like modern Albanian music. Modern Albanian I really music. like but I like Butrint actually. I like what he's been doing. Butrint to me. Butrint is pretty good. And you know, like when I tell people that I like Butrint, like other Albanian guys like, oh, you don't listen to noisy, you're, you're what are you a girl? You listen to Butrint, he makes like love music. I'm like, bro, that music is good. 
He yeah. makes good music. It's it's good music for sure. Yeah. Besides yeah. Print, who do you like? Um, I mean, I do like Ledri. Ledri's pretty mm -hmm. good. Uh, who else? I think this is this is new artist, this new Albanian artist that I've been listening to. I forget his name, man. If you're Can't at the gym and you're right working now. out and you need a pump, who will Kanye. you listen to? Kanye. Kanye. Yeah. Okay. Kanye. Okay. Kanye. He's on my, he's the he's on my top three. Kanye is the greatest artist I've ever lived. <laughs> Are we claiming him as an Albanian too? <laughs> Kanye is Albanian. He made the Vultures t-shirts. You see that? I have like three of them. You seen the Vultures, I mean, his, his Vultures merch? He has the eagle on the back. Was there every, every time I'm at the gym. Conversation about inspiration from that coming from either the Drake video or the Albanian flag itself? Because it does seem like it's a direct inspiration from the Albanian flag and the what, Albanian eagle. What I, what I think is, because that, that Vultures merch came out after the Drake video. Mm -hmm. yeah. and i think and, and drake had the albanian eagle on and drake is kind of known as like a culture vulture yeah right? so i think that was a shot at drake i think he was calling him like a vulture i think so too mm -hmm. i really think so because kanye kanye actually has albanians that work for him too which is funny a lot of people don't know that yeah. but he's got albanians that work for him so i feel like that was something that was planned because it, it literally yeah. happened right it had after to have been they were calling drake a culture vulture i mean one second drake's black then he's jewish then he's making reggae i don't know yeah. So I think I think Kanye was calling him a culture vulture. It could I be love Drake though. Don't get me wrong. I really love Drake. He's in my top three. One stone. He could be you know subtweeting Drake, but also he could be trying to rebrand the eagle for himself. So it's not going to be called an Albanian eagle. He's like, no, it's not an Albanian eagle. It's a vulture. I'm representing myself. Guess, you know, yeah. like Nestle has like ten different types of like waters, but it's all Nestle under a different name. Yeah. It's like a rebranding. Yeah more than that but i mean what what it kind of looks like it doesn't really look much like an albanian eagle though doesn't it kind of look like the one that's on the serbian flag it's like the german one it's more of the byzantine byzantine style eagle because it has like the, the wings that go like straight down you know what i'm talking about instead of like yeah it, it comes it's like not down gonna from be the, arms. the exact same obviously it's going to be like some kind of orientation of it but i guess yeah. as an albanian i will be the first to try to claim it <laughs> no we definitely gotta claim that we definitely gotta claim that <laughs> oh yeah For sure. oh yeah so we ask, claim as much as we can. Um, what is that? I'll ask you more about being in Albania proper. Where have you visited within the Republic of Albania? If you so have. I've visited Kraja and Ocin, which is not, it's mainly Albanian population. Well, it's not Albania, but it's Albanian population. Albania in general, like ethnic Albania. So, so I've been to Tirana okay. and I've been to the south. So Saran and Xam Xamil, is that you say it? Xamil. Xamil, yeah. Xamil, yeah. Xamil, yeah. Xamil. Xamil. Um, yeah, so those are the places I've been to. I really like Toronto, though. Toronto reminds me of like a little New York City. When I were like you Toronto there? A lot. And that's, that's your home city. I think it was like two years ago when I was there last. Okay. I was for that interview on Rudina. Rudina Magistari, I went on I went on her TV show. Okay. That's when I was there last. I was there for like less than a day, though. No way. Less, it's, you yeah, had no time? Or what? I didn't really have much time, no. Oh. I had to, uh, yeah, I had to bounce. But it was, but it was nice while I was there. It's great it's really fun yeah. it's happening it's um very cultural it's very retro there's a spot for any kind of vibe like i'm like doing an advertisement for my city but it's actually really fun <laughs> and no, it's a nice city man and you know do you, do you, so because i what happened no no go ahead go ahead because babe. i work for a marriott because i work for a marriott um i do get like marriott discounts in like hotels like all around the world and i saw that the i actually stayed at the first marriott in albania that's in, in Tirana. It's the first ever Marriott that opened in Albania. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't they just open that like last year or two years ago, whatever it was? Yeah, they just they just opened it. Yeah. And they, they treated me like a king when I went there. No, it was like sixty dollars and they gave me like a suite. It was so it was like amazing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, they were so out. happy. They were so happy that they were so happy that like an American came. They didn't you know who I was actually. They didn't know me from my TikToks or anything. They were just happy that I was like American in there. Hey. You're gonna get me that connection That's when I go there. I got you, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah. I need the Marriott discount. For you, I got you. It's a beautiful what hotel. The, it's a really, really nice hotel. Is a difference, and we were talking about this a little bit before the show, between Albanians in America and Albanians in Albania. If there are any cultural differences that you've noticed, um, I think there are. I mean, obviously, growing up here in America, you're not going to have the full Albanian culture. Whereas in in Albania, I feel like they're more like traditional um they have more more like tradition like you know like the, the traditional albanian cultures i don't know why like i can't really explain it right now but like 
more old, I guess. I guess like more old Albanian cultures or traditions. Whereas in here, it's more like westernized. So authentic. Like I didn't insert remix. <laughs> yeah, like an authentic remix, I guess. If you want to call it. Okay. Yeah. Why do you think? Do you what do you think? Do you think there's a difference? I think definitely I agree with the whole the authentic versus the remix version being here. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you need a bit of a remix. Sometimes you like the authentic version too. But I think there is, of course, there's a whole ocean between us and we're on different continents. So I think mm. oftentimes when Albanians that immigrated abroad to America or to Germany go back, they realize that things have changed and become more modern in terms of mindset, growth, opportunity yeah. than it was when they left Albania and they yeah. feel a sense of sorrow like Albania kind of forgot them and they moved on so they remain more traditional after they leave Albania and they go to places yeah. like um, New York or even the UK and they'll have arrived here in the 1990s for example and they'll stick to the tradition of Albanians can only marry Albanians they're going back to Albania and they're seeing Albanians are marrying foreigners they're like oh my god like how did that yeah. happen so yeah yeah, in a way, we do preserve culture here in a different form, but I think Albanians, maybe our parent generation more so than us, tend to get stuck in their ways of that specific year that they left Albania or the Albanian diaspora yeah. um, surrounding sure. Albania from. So, yeah, my parents were actually arranged. My parents were oh, yeah. like arranged marriage. Yeah. Tell so us that when story. they found out, so funny thing is, like, I actually, I would have to ask my mom because I really don't know how exactly it happened. Um, I know my mom came here like on her sister's passport. I don't know if I'm opping her out right now and she's gonna get arrested, but <laughs> she came here like on her sister's passport. And my dad like just met her at the airport. Apparently they well, they're from the same town. So their family is just kind of somehow hooked up her with my dad, and that's how it happened. He came and picked how absurd is that? He came and picked her up. Didn't know talk about a blind date, didn't know what she looked <laughs> like, like or nothing. Like that's wow. the definition of like, just blind. That's like blind life date. Like I'm gonna marry, be with this person for the rest of my life, and I don't even know what they look like, who they are. Not even they, a picture or anything. It's, it's, maybe I'm sure. Maybe he saw a picture, but like <laughs> you don't know how the person acts and like acts in person. You know, I haven't gone on a date. It's just like yeah, okay, I'm gonna pick you up from the airport, and we're gonna spend the rest of our lives together. That's that's crazy. That's that insane. is crazy. <laughs> that's but yeah, it's... and that's how that's I keep hitting my camera over here, and that's how it is for like most like a You're lot of Albanian people. Trying to get into a fight <laughs> with the <laughs> Bro, I keep hitting it with my foot. Man, that's Every crazy to even back. imagine. That's crazy to imagine that because, like, my mom was Yo. 17 and a half. My dad was, like, 20 when they got married. But it wasn't arranged. Obviously, they had to like each other. But, like, I've heard mm -hmm. of stories like this where people knew nothing about the other person and just had to get married. And they yeah, just made it work. <laughs> and now here they go. Yeah. I respect that a lot. They didn't make it work. Imagine trying to tell that to an American person today, like, all right, you just go get married to this person. And you have to spend <laughs> like, the rest of your life with that person. You don't know them or nothing. You got to have kids, too. Otherwise, your parents are going to get mad at you. That's fucking, that's wow. crazy. Yeah. yeah, that is insane. That is insane. Albanians are really interesting. I think it's, I don't know if it's still like that over there. So, and like in my videos, I make fun of that stereotype mm -hmm. sometimes uh, in some of them. And people actually got mad at me about that because they're like, yeah, we're not like that anymore, which I'm I'm sure they... You know, they've gotten updated a little bit. It's um, not. Um, and yeah. it goes back to the point of like, okay, we keep the culture of the year that we come here with sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, Albania, I think, expands and grows so rapidly. Like you will go there yeah. um, now and then go back in six months and you'll realize there's a whole new development in some area yeah. or a different city. And whatever trend is happening here, they'll jump on it. 10 times faster yeah try to own it and i think Rather there's a form of competition within albania where they try to out western each other and be like no i'm modern no i'm more modern so definitely after communism um there's been a movement to get as much information from the outside world as possible mm -hmm. but it's still funny though it was still part of the culture at one point in time so yeah, in Kosovo, they so. still do arranged marriages it's still a thing absolutely do it's actually history. big it, it's more big in like the muslim albanians whereas kosovo is like a muslim majority no yeah kosovo. Correct, me oh. if I'm, correct me if i'm wrong albania now it is majority. now it is yeah yeah kosovo Which is I'm a muslim, well over 90 percent um muslim majority it's like 95 percent muslim majority albania yeah. is also muslim. i think they're like 45 percent now or something like that 
Mm-hmm. They, they, I think they dropped. They dropped down. They're not a Muslim majority anymore, right? Yeah, they okay. just. I th- yeah, it just passed like a couple months ago that they said yeah. it's not Muslim majority anymore. It's like forty percent now. I don't know if that's true, or I don't, I don't know, know if that's true. That to and, or I don't know if they're trying. They're of... trying to get into like the EU. I think they're trying to get into the EU, and the EU doesn't like Muslim countries. I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I think I think them being a Muslim majority lowers their chance of actually getting into the EU. It's also yeah, identity I th- politics. I think so. To an extent, it's definitely identity, identity politics. politics in representation, but also a different conversation about misrepresenting your identity. Because if you start with threatening your religion, then you're going to start threatening other aspects of who you are just to fit into the yeah. club. When the yeah. EU is actually, you know, the EU is getting older. They need younger countries like Albania and Kosovo to be able to yeah. keep the workforce going and to rehabilitate many economies that are in decline. Um, and- so it's definitely debatable where those numbers are coming from and those religious factors. I'm, in, I'm a Muslim Albanian. And I know yeah. the community in Albania and that it's it hasn't declined um, at all in numbers. In fact, from activity and presentation publicly, it seems to have grown. So those numbers can be a whole variety of factors in yeah. them. But the main idea behind all this is that Albanians, regardless of the identity politics of religion, we identify as Albanian. And that's the most yeah. important part of us being albanian and being harmonious towards it as well so you're and that's that's the point that no i'm muslim that's the point that i try to get across sometimes too because uh sometimes i'll make like videos and they're like oh he's like a montenegrin albanian he's a fake albanian bro my my bloodline is albanian like why can't we why why as another <laughs> albanian do you have to try and diversify us more than we already are exactly you know i mean why can't we just like stick together because we're already a small country as it is we're already like most of the country we're on the rise now but it was poor for a long time and it's from like mentalities like that you know like why yeah it's annoying why don't you want more people on your side rather than pushing away people that you think are not albanian it's i don't know it gets me upset sometimes i'll make a meme and i'll put albania and when i put albania i mean like the whole everything there and people will be like oh that's albania that's not kosovo that's not i'm like bro we're all the same thing we're all the same it's really dumb like Especially in the Balkans, like culture is so similar, especially uh, amongst Albanians. For us to try yeah. to differentiate between each other, the whole world already sees it as the same thing. So, yeah. like, no, I'm an Albanian from Tirana and you're from Kraja in Montenegro. We're different. That's just dumb. Like, it's actually not intelligent or, you know, correct to say that. So, I like that you point yeah. that out because I think we need more That's what I'm saying. in bringing us together. And I just more unity. Household to household, when you go and meet Albanians, it's the same thing. <laughs> same. Literally. Parents. Yeah. Our, our, our dialects might be, our dialects might be a little bit different, but mm-hmm. you're still gonna go in someone's, like you said, household to household. Mm-hmm. It's still gonna be the same culture, the same everything. You're yeah. still eating book of the author. It's still, you're still the same eating thing. book of the author, man. You're still you're listening to the same music. I gotta, I gotta take a bite. That reminds me, I gotta take a bite because I'm hungry. Oh, I love it. Oh man, so, um, Blerim. When it comes to business ventures for the future, because I get a bit of a vibe of a business person from you and very entrepreneurial because the creative people tend to be like that too, especially very Mm -hmm. common ones. What do you want to create in the future in terms of Um, business ventures? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I, if I eventually end up making some money off of social media, which is not really like, that's not long-term sustainable. Um, I mean, I just kind of listen to what the richer people say around me. They say invest in real estate. Um, I do really want to become a landlord, you know, and I'll probably make videos about an Albanian landlord. Like a typical Albanian landlord with a cigarette in their mouth. Yeah, I, I fixed the light. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's okay. that, that's two, next. Two, two weeks. Two weeks is not fixed, you know. So, I mean, but all jokes, all jokes aside, I want to be, I, my goal is to be a landlord or a property owner. That's my, that's, that's my that's business good. side. Yeah. Get into that creative financing and find how to close properties with, Zero percent. There you go. I actually have. There you go. I have my real estate license already. So. Ah, he's getting started. I'm already, I'm already half. I'm already halfway there. Halfway there. I dabble that's, in that's a lot great. of things. You dabble yeah. in a lot of things. So what else are you dabbling in that we don't know about? Oh, I can't tell you. I tell <laughs> so you, we, should tell you. we should stay tuned. <laughs> Where can we stay tuned? We should stay tuned. Yeah, some, you? some things need to have the element of surprise. Some things need to have the element of surprise. Okay. I can't show all my cards. Right. But what's your X factor, though? If someone doesn't know Blair, you've never heard about him, and they're like, who's this guy people are talking about on social media? What makes you different? Mm, what makes you different? That's a good question. I think me being Albanian is is solely the thing that makes me different. <laughs> There's not a lot of Albanian people out there. So Besides sometimes people that. don't even know. 
Yeah, besides, besides that. that. Um, personality I mean, I character. I, have, I think I have like a strong personality for business. Like you said, like the business, you got like a business of vibe for me. I don't, I don't know mm -hmm. how, but I guess like that's the vibe <laughs> that I give off. Mm -hmm. But it's true though. I do have really like a a, a business focus, and yeah, I think what I think what makes me different is I'm always thinking about how I can better better myself or better the people around me and and grow. I think that's yeah. one thing that would stand out about me. Okay, awesome. Well, awesome. Where can people? Find I just you? realized that I, I just realized that I don't know much about myself. That was a hard question. That, <laughs> that was a hard session question. number two. That was a hard question. <laughs> like, psychoanalysis think, at the session. I think I need some. I think I need yeah. some therapy actually. It's a good therapy <laughs> session rather than a podcast. Wow, an Albanian man that actually believes in therapy. Uh, That's what yeah, we're right. No, no, no therapy. No. No therapy. Fake. No. Um, therapy is fake. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Dame, where can we find you on online or social media for those of our followers who would like to become a fan? So you can find me at Blerim Nick. So B-L-E-R-I-M-N-I-K. So that's the first three letters of my last name. Um, I didn't have, I couldn't get Blurum because I was already taken. So I had to, oh, no. I had to put Blurum Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I messaged the guy and I wanted to buy the profile of him. He never answered. Okay. So hopefully he sees this now and he'll sell it to me. So I can be just Blurum. That's pretty, tag that him. pretty cool. Tag at Blurum in the comments. Yeah, right. We got to tag him. But yeah, Blurum Nick is where you can find me on all platforms. Um, and I'll slowly be getting into YouTube eventually. That's Here the big go. one. That's the big all one. Right. Yeah, man. All righty. All, All right, Durham, Durham, I, thank you. Oh, you have a question? Go ahead. I just wanted Love I just guys. wanted to say I wanted to say one more thing before you go and before we all go. Um, what's in one inspiring thing you could tell to another Albanian today to just, you know, follow their dreams? What's something that you can what say something positive to the Albanian world today, you know? Something positive. Something positive? I mean, <laughs> no matter how small the small no matter how small a community the Albanian community is, or no matter how bad the odds are against you. You can always do, like, I, I look at my dad for inspiration. He came from zero, not even having shoes, not even having money. And he came to the U.S. and made, and just lived the American dream. Not, as, not You don't have to necessarily come to the U.S., but when all odds are stacked against you, you just have to be resilient and really just do what you want to do and just and be yourself. But the first thing is to just just do it. Like, I sound like I sound like that guy, what's his name? Uh, Shia LaBeouf. Like, that was, that was, just do it! Just Shia do LaBeouf. it! He was doing that the other day. He was like, <laughs> Yeah, don't let your dreams be dreams. Just do it. Yeah, you just got to do that, man. Is the 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 number one thing is just taking that first step, and anything That's awesome, is possible. Man. That's awesome. Well, we appreciate your That's time, nice. Barim. You you've been amazing. You're a very positive Thanks, influence. Appreciate not you. Not just to me. You're a positive influence to the Albanian community. You're a positive influence to that burek that you're eating right there. We love I'm it. Actually, this, is, this, is, <laughs> this is this is making a positive influence on me. Oh, look at this thing. It's nice and crispy, man. Did you make it? <laughs> Wait, no, where, where'd you get it from? I can't cook. I'm a man. <laughs> Come on, this is not this is an Albanian household. Men don't cook. Yo, I'm I'm back. Are you gonna say something? Or who's saying it? <laughs> Larry, we got you back. That break took you Yo, out. The break, the break took out my Wi-Fi connection, bro. It, it was so good it knocked out the Wi-Fi. <laughs> That's how good it was. Larry, thank you so much for being on our show today. We love sharing a much lot love. with you. Thanks for all the love you share for the Albanian community and for the GXM podcast as well. We will be referring everyone who wants to buy a house to you in the future as one of the <laughs> real estate agents in the area. And oh we can't wait to see you drop more reels on IG. It's and on coming. They're coming and if you're a hot, social media, If you're a social media influencer, hit them up too. You guys can collab, make some work yeah. happen, make some magic happen. Albanians, Albanians, um, Albanians got to take it up to the next level. And we will, we will. We're up and coming, bro. There we go. All right, guys. Until next time. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. <laughs>